and welcome to Fret Search episode three. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, I suggest you have a look and find out what it's all about. Okay, let's jump straight in and solve last week's problems. So we'll start with the easier of the two problems, and this is the extract that I gave you. But it was the right hand that I was interested in. So the um, main difficulty is uh, where you have two notes together as a dotted quaver, then a semi-quaver, and then a crotchet. But it happens very fast, um, as you just heard. Now the book, the Segreris Book of Studies, suggests three lots of M. Now I don't know if that's what the study is for, just to repeat M very fast. But to me, it seems very awkward. Um, when you're playing two notes fast together, and one of them is A, it's often a good idea that the other one is I. And it works in this case if you play two notes with A and M and the one note with I. Play that slowly again. So once more, A and M, I, A and M. It's just lovely and crisp. So that's my solution for that part of it. And the same principle applies to the uh, melody. So you've got M and then I, and rather than another M, you go M I A. M I A. And that's speed between I and A is much easier than if it was M and A. So and don't forget you've got the, um, the thumb on the bass as well. So basically you've got two things going on here. You've got the um, that and then you've got is always the same. It's always M I A for the melody and it's always A and M together and an I and then A and M together and once you get used to it it'll feel really it'll feel really nice to play. Now there's one more thing about this that I want to tell you about and that's the first melody note. It's natural to play it with an A. When you play it with an A if you use a rest stroke, it rests on the next string and you're kind of ready for that next pattern, A and M. It just feels really nice to play, but don't forget the bass note as well. And then the melody, and then again. A and you're ready. Sorry about the buzz. And then so you've got the same thing, the same pattern going on three times in a row. And that's the solution to the first of this week's problems. Now let's have a look at the second problem. So you have this melody in the bass. And you've got the accompaniment above it. And the 
thing is you can't do both so you're going to have to change the fingers because you're using two in the bass here and you're using two here as well so the first um, solution that I have is rather than playing one and two play one and three and you've got then two and four to play the melody so that is the easy part and that looks like this more open open now the hard bit the difficult bit and this is the reason that I set set this problem for you is we have to get up to fifth position to play that okay so the problem is when you come down from the arpeggio last note of the arpeggio is this A with the third finger and the first note of this section the melody note is another A with the third finger but you have to be in fifth position because of the chord above it okay so the problem is playing an A there and jumping it is possible, but have a listen to how it sounds. Um, it's just a little bit of a strain and you'd be very likely to make a mistake, I would say. So I think the solution on this arpeggio changed to two. And while you're doing that, three here is ready and you can get it ready on the string and when you shift you, all you have to do is slide up to there seventh fret fifth position and it makes a huge difference there's one more way of doing it and that is if you start with one and two you can stretch third back squeeze it in like this And three and three is ready there to then slide but I opted for this method because there's no cramping going on there's no stretching of the fingers okay so let's have a look at it one more time change slide more at speed so that's the solution to last week's problem okay so let's have a look at next week's problem and this is um, a very famous um, piece <laughs> two parts to this and this is the second part and I'd like you to see if you can manage both hands um, in this one so that's the easy task now the harder task um, is a very hard one this week so beginners I would leave this one alone but this is from um, a book six Segreras piece <laughs> Yeah, it's going to take you a little while to work this one out but I'd like it to be right and left hands and uh, I'll show you the solution next week so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe hit the bell notification and I'll see you next Friday